What if there was a way to optimize our energy consumption, help our environment and cut down your costs? The world is facing two mega challenges. One great challenge is to significantly reduce our usage of fossil fuels and replace those with renewable energy. The second one is to optimize our energy consumption since the energy supply is not covering our increasing demand. The energy industry is shifting towards a more decentralized energy production system. To produce energy where it's consumed is both smart and efficient. With renewable energies such as wind, solar and indoor light, you can create energy locally. To reach our climate goals, we must shift to renewable energies and find innovative energy optimization solutions. Energy optimization can be applied to countless applications. But if we want to make the largest possible impact, we need to start this process where the largest amount of energy is consumed. In the European Union and other parts of the world, the building sector represents the largest energy consumer. Collectively, buildings are responsible for 43% of our energy consumption and 37% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Today, roughly 75% of the European Union building sector is energy inefficient. This means that a large part of the energy produced goes to waste. Such energy loss can be minimized by making existing buildings more sustainable. This is ideally done by implementing smart digital solutions to optimize the operation and maintenance of the buildings. The European Green Deal sets out an ambitious goal of net zero emissions by 2050. Making buildings sustainable, especially improving energy efficiency, plays a vital role in achieving this. So, what makes a building sustainable? A sustainable building minimizes the environmental impact it has. It uses less resources like water and energy and supports the people in it to be resource efficient. And how can we achieve that? For new buildings, there are plenty of options, including construction methods and material choices. And there are ways to improve sustainability in existing buildings. About 75% of a building's CO2 emissions come from operations. So for both new and existing buildings, focusing on optimizing energy consumption and how the building is used can have a big impact on its sustainability. To do this, we need to collect data to gain insight and control. In this way, we can make sure that rooms are not kept warmer than needed, lights are not on when no one is there, and that we clean only when necessary. In short, through digitalization, it's possible to achieve sustainability goals, cut down on costs, and have more satisfied users of our buildings. Data collection and building automation are important aspects of achieving sustainable operations and maintenance. An increasing amount of data is required to reduce operating costs, lower environmental impact, and increase property value. As we see it, three challenges stand out when it comes to large-scale deployment of devices and sensors. These are installation cost, environmental impact, and total cost of ownership. Wired solutions are the traditional way of powering devices. These are suitable for new buildings where wires can be planned for from the beginning. They are reliable, but they are expensive and offer little flexibility. Battery-powered solutions have lower initial costs than wired solutions, offer greater flexibility, and can easily be retrofitted into existing buildings. The disadvantages, however, are maintenance costs related to battery replacements and, of course, the negative effect disposable batteries have on our environment. In fact, due to the wasteful nature of batteries, there are several international initiatives in motion that aim to regulate the commercial use of disposable batteries. What if we could keep the benefits of both wired and battery-powered solutions? A logical and innovative approach is self-powered devices that are wireless, environmentally friendly, and require no maintenance during the entire lifetime of the product, which of course decreases the total cost of ownership immensely. Today's digital environment is evolving, leading to an exponential increase in the number of connected devices, increasing the demand for self-powered solutions. There are several different ways to make electronics self-powered. First, we have heat. Heat energy is great in some specific cases, such as wearables and in other places with temperature differences. For instance, near industrial machines. But for IoT devices, this is usually not the case. Secondly, there is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy works well when there is motion from either machines or people, or when there are vibrations to extract it from. Light switches are a great application for this type of energy. 
The biggest drawback is that the motion needed for kinetic energy is not available everywhere. A third option is radio frequency waves. Radio waves are applicable with devices that only need to upload data at less frequent intervals, for example, once a month. Radio waves are available almost everywhere, but the energy that is possible to harvest is very low, which means that those devices also need a secondary energy source. So then, which natural energy sources are generally available? When there are people in buildings, there's light. The availability and sufficiency of light power make it the ideal solution for many forms of IoT devices in buildings. The market for indoor light power is developing rapidly. There are multiple options of light power on the market today, and even more to come. When choosing a suitable solution for your device, there are a few things to consider. One thing to consider is the time to market. Because of the extensive developing time for indoor solar cell, large-scale production and time to market can be uncertain. So consider if the indoor solar cell that you are looking at is ready for mass production. Another thing to consider is sustainability. Light power is generally considered a very sustainable option, but there are degrees of sustainability. This can vary depending on production and material. LCA is an important method to see how sustainable an indoor solar cell is in all its aspects. Make sure that the solar cell that you choose consists of material that meets your company standards, like REACH and ROS. Lastly, you need to consider how much energy you can harvest from the available light. A traditional indoor solar cell, like the one we used to see in old calculators, often doesn't perform well enough in new applications. A connected sensor often needs more power. Instead, consider a cell that is designed for indoor applications. Epishine's indoor solar cell were created for optimal performance in indoor light. They have high and even efficiency and reliable performance. The solar cells are made of organic materials which are non-toxic and do not contain conflict minerals. Engineers looking for solutions for the self-powered electronics say that Epishine's technology means a breakthrough for them. Now, it finally works. The cell's design is thin and flexible, which makes them easy to integrate in different applications and gives our customers great design possibilities, including curved, thin, small and flexible products. They are the ideal solution for self-powered electronics. The indoor solar cell can be used alone or in conjunction with capacitors or other small storage solutions. This means that we can eliminate both disposable batteries and maintenance costs. To reach our climate goals, we must shift to renewable energies and find innovative energy optimization solutions. Epishine provides a decentralized energy solution self-powering your electronic devices with light power made of organic materials.